Brutog Corpse Eater and the Varskyer are two of the biggest models from the Curse City box. One is a towering vampire monster creature and the other is a mean looking ogre looking for a fight and something to eat. But the question is, which one of these beasts is better to paint? Hey everybody, Sponge Murphy here and in today's video I will be showing you guys how I painted up both Brutal Corpse Eater and the Vargskyer from the Curse City box set. Now at the end of the video I will be comparing notes from both painting sessions and I will be coming up with which model truly is the better model to paint. Brutog Corpse Eater is sadly one of the minor disappointments from the Curse City box. Not that the model looks bad, he looks great. The pose is good and there are some nice details on his neck and his armour but when I put him together I couldn't help feel underwhelmed by his size. I really think he was going to be just a little bit taller like he should be standing well over people but I think I might be able to fix this a little bit when it comes to the basin. I start off with painting Bugman's glow on his skin. Painting skin is one of my weak points so I'm kind of hoping for the best when starting it. I am trying Gulliman's flesh instead of my usual Reichlin flesh shade and I can already tell that Brutog is going to have a slightly tanned skin tone. To try and brighten the skin up a bit I layered on Cadian flesh tone in the muscle parts and avoiding the recesses. One layer down and I start to apply another one on top of it and it doesn't look too bad but then I start overthinking it and I need more contrast in the recesses. I leave it for now and start the base layer on his pants with Cantor Blue. A dark blue with some highlights looks great and it's something that I'm wanting to do more of. Then I base his boots with the usual boot colour of Abaddon Black. Now onto the bulk of the model. I start by painting the deepest parts of the model and that's the leather armour, the straps and the wraps around his wrists with Mornfang Brown. Then the silver parts were painted lead belcher. That's the chain mail, weapons, helmet, the knee pad and the metal panels on the leather. Steel Legion drab was then applied on the fur that's coming out from underneath the armour. For the gold parts, I started with the lighter colour of Liberator Gold on the trim of his giant shoulder pad, Retributor Armour on the buckles of his straps and Balthazar Gold on the big scary face part of the shoulder pad. Dryad Bark was used on the handle to finish off his mace and the lighter Scrag Brown was used for the cloth between his hands and his iron fist. With the base coats on, the next step is to get the shades in with Null and Oil covering the silver parts and just then I noticed I had missed some of the rivets on his arm. With that sorted I moved on to Agrax Earthshade on the leather, the fur and the pants. Then it was Reichland Flesh Shade on the shoulder pad. With Reichland Flesh Shade still on the painting tray I thought no better colour for the recesses. This will add more muscle definition in the arms and neck and hopefully that might be it for the skin. With everything dry, I started highlighting all the silver parts by finally going over the prominent edges with Stormhost Silver and dry brushing it over the chain mail. Scrag Brown was then used to highlight the straps and the leather and going back using Stormhost Silver again, I highlighted the edges of the gold on the straps, the edges of the shoulder pad and the most prominent features on the face of it. The blue of the pants was then highlighted back up with Cantor Blue. A highlighted dark blue colour looks really good. On to the final part that is left which is his teeth, his necklace and the horn sticking through the shoulder pad. A Zandri Dust base, Agrax Earthshade and a final highlight of Pallid Witch Flesh. And that's it for big old Brutog. As I said earlier, I was a little disappointed by his size, so I knew I had to elevate him a little bit higher on the base. I used this stuff that I had on the shelf for about two years, that I thought it was cork, but when I opened it, it was some sort of foam. So I guess it's just gotta do. I cut it into shape and glued it onto the base along with some skull bits. Astronite granite was then spread across the rest of the base, and when dry, it was Mechanica's standard grey base, Agrax Earthshade, and a dry brush of Dawnstone to finish it off. With Brutog finished, it's time to move over to the other big guy of the set, the Vargskyer. Now the Vargskyer is a guy that definitely towers over other people. 
This big boy is quite impressive in size, but he looks ugly. But ugly in the best way. He looks like how a monster should look. Big, scary, intimidating guy. But there is one problem that really scares me about this fella. So much flesh. Painting flesh is like my kryptonite. It's not that I'm bad at it, but it's like I said before, I completely overthink it. What a way to test my painting chops by painting a full fleshy model. Well, let's see how I get on with it. I start off by using an undercoat spray of Wraith Bone that has been lying around for a while. And I think it's the first time I've actually gotten around to using it. But it spreads across the model really well. Then I started the main colour of the skin, Pallid Witch Flesh. A bright skin tone, I know. I'm a glutton for punishment. But instead of my usual just jumping straight in with a shade straight out of the pot, I heavily watered down the Reichland Flesh Shade and spread it around, trying not to pull up parts in the recesses. But when it's dried, a small bit did manage to pull up near the feet, but it was easily covered back up with Pallid Witch Flesh. Keeping with the Pallid Witch Flesh, I give the whole model a dry brush with the colour while constantly telling myself less means more while dry brushing and honestly, I am really happy how it's turning out so far. Moving on to the fur, I start with a Bend Blade Brown because it's a light coloured brown that keeps with the tone and the flesh a little bit. While that was drying, I layered Xandri dust over his claws and also his teeth. Then I added the next colour onto the fur. Dryad bark was applied to the edges of the fur and his tail. With the fur again drying, I went over his stretchy arm parts. I'm not too sure what they're called, but two layers of Carburg Crimson was used to separate it from the pale skin tone. To add depth to the fur, I went over it with Agrax Urshade to make the browns blend a little bit better. Then I went back to Bane Blade Brown to dry brush the highlights on. Agrax Urshade was used then again on his claws and fangs before I steadied my hand and tried to get the tiniest amount of Uriel Yellow onto his eyes. I put some Reichland Flesh Shade over the yellow eyes just to darken them the right amount. With the end in sight, I wanted to add some extra detail, so I went in with the technical paint Blood for the Blood God around the mouth and around his claws and hands. I dry brushed Steel Legion Drab up along his legs to give him a dirty look and finally finished off with a highlight of a shafty bone on his feet. And with that, the Varskyer is done. It turned out much nicer than I thought it would and well quicker than it usually takes me to paint the models. So with the models now painted and based, it's time to now discuss which model really was better to paint. There are three things that I'm going to use to decide the final result. The first one is the length of painting time. The painting time between models can vary, but these two are a similar size, so was there much of a time difference? Actually there was. Brutog took much longer than I thought it would because he had a lot of details on him. Even looking at this video, you can see that Brute Dog's part has much more steps in it than the Vargsire's part. As for the Vargsire, 90% of this guy is just his skin, which took hardly any time at all. Yes, you could go into a lot more detail than I did, but even at a decent tabletop standard, he looks pretty good. The point goes to the Vargsire. Number 2 is the easiest model to paint. Just like the length of painting time, the ease of painting a model is made up of a variety of different elements. The Vargskyer is all about the flesh, and the great thing about that is, when you get it right, it turns out great. But, and there's always a but, if you're like me, skin can be a very intimidating part of a model to paint, and the skin paint job is everything on this guy. Brutog, on the other hand, is almost paint by numbers. There's nothing particularly hard on him to paint, it's just he has a lot of different parts to paint. And because of that, Brutog was essentially the easier model to paint. Point to Brutog. And the final thing, if it comes to a tiebreaker like this, I'm just going to share my personal thoughts on it. I think I was a bit harsh on Brutog at the start, saying he was a minor disappointment because he could have been a bit taller. But after painting the guy, I really started to like the model. His lore in the box is as basic as it comes, so there wasn't a way to connect with him lore-wise. But you know, he has a good pose, but apart from that, I think it's just a little bit of a mediocre model overall. The Varskyer was the model I really liked, but was terrified at the idea of painting flesh. But he was the one I overall enjoyed painting the most. Maybe it was the element of getting out of my comfort zone and seeing that painting something that I think is difficult wasn't too hard once I was prepared for it. And since this is the tiebreaker, I have to give the point to the Varskyer. 
But I had a good time painting both of these guys, and it was fun comparing painting us between the both of them. But the next couple of painting battles are going to be for the models from the Curse City box, and up next is going to be Yeltsin Darok versus Vikrus Bloodborne. So if you guys like this video, make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe if you haven't. And once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.